Have you ever felt like you're losing your mind when you're grieving? Well, let's walk together and I'll share with you what happens to our brain in the midst of grief and how to move through that very scary aspect of the journey. Hi friend, welcome back to Grief Questions Answered. I'm Eric and it's my goal with these videos to share everything that I've learned about how to survive, find the support and the loneliness of the grief and how to intentionally get back up and live beyond the loss of a loved one. If this grief tip doesn't help you today, I am confident it can and will help you at some point in the future. So be sure to save this video to watch later on. And if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down below as this is one of the best ways to get notified of new videos just like this and to show support for our channel. Shelia posted in our group the other day and she asked, has anyone experienced memory loss? <laughs> then she goes on to ask, did you get it back and how long did it take? And when she asked this question, what came to my mind is that, yeah, grief brain is real. It's feeling that like you can't remember everyday things, you feel spaced out, forgetful, or that you're unable to make even decisions with some sort of clarity. Now, some people call this brain fog or grief brain. I call it the blur, and it came on for me too. And it was scary at first not being able to remember why I was doing certain things. And I, I, there was even times when I couldn't remember names and words and things that I knew so very well. And it kind of scared me and maybe it's doing that for you too. So I recall a couple of months after I lost Zoe, I was back at work and I was talking to a work colleague and for most of that conversation, I couldn't find the words that I wanted to use. And I remember walking away from that conversation wondering if I, something was wrong, if I was sick or if I was going crazy. And then just a couple of weeks later, I was talking with a friend and I was recalling a scene from a very well-known movie that I've watched over and over and over again and I couldn't recall the actors' names when I knew them by heart. And it was starting to worry me and I thought I was broken or even possibly damaged permanently. But when I sat down with one of my, with my therapist, she actually confirmed that I wasn't going crazy. I was just grieving. And so for you, here are some of the ways that the grief brain can, or brain fog can show up. It could be not able to recall certain things and everyday things that we know so well. It could be that we're misplacing items like our phone or our keys and we can't remember where we put them down. It could even be thinking about something in detail and then five minutes later trying to remember what it was we were just thinking about and we can't. <laughs> I mean, how frustrating is all of that? Well, I can tell you that the good news is that these moments of memory loss are just that. They're just moments and it's a phase of our journey and it's actually a normal part of the grieving process. Why is that? Well, grief temporarily re rewires our brain to focus the energy on the grief itself and the processing of our emotions. And that absolutely affects our memory. It's kind of like robbing Peter to pay Paul, where Peter is our memory and Paul is our emotions. Our brain is essentially trying to protect us in, in a cocoon of fog. And grief only amplifies this phenomenon and that's why it's so scary. That's why you feel like you're losing your mind. And so it's really important to find ways to create clarity in your life on a daily basis. And so here are a couple of ways that you can do that. And these are actually really easy. The first is diaphragmatic breathing. It actually helps to reduce your overwhelming emotions. And br belly breathing actually tells your brain that you're, it's okay to come down from the stress that you're feeling. And you can actually do this intentionally and that allows for the brain fog to kind of settle down and for you to gain more clarity. The next thing is, is I use sticky notes. I love sticky notes. I have them all over my desk. I use them for everything. Some people prefer a small notebook that they keep with them, but whatever works here is good. But by doing this, you're actually removing the pressure of having to remember things that you want to remember or things that you want to do. It actually gives your brain a little bit of a break and it's able to focus the healing on the grief. 
And finally is exactly this option that Shelia did and that was to post in the online group. The online groups are a great way to connect with others and it gives you a sense of community to ask questions or bounce uh, ideas off of to get clarity. And the good thing is here with Shelia's post that a lot of people wrote back and said they felt the same way. I know I did too. So Shelia, you're not crazy and you're not broken. You're just grieving. And your brain is literally protecting itself by creating this fog. And it's a normal part of the grieving process. And I can tell you that eventually this feeling of memory loss and this brain fog will begin to subside and you'll start to feel more memories of your loved one that are gonna be loving memories. And so it'll make you also feel like you're back on, on good ground with your memory again, and it, like it did for me and it, and it does for others. And so as always, Shelia, I hope this helps. I'm sure this is a very scary aspect of your journey or you're not sure what's going on with your brain. And so I invite you to try one or all of the options above as a way to cope with this temporary component of grief. And so do you have a question about grief that I can answer for you? Let me know in the comments below. And by the way, don't forget to join us for the next Emotional Relief Workshop. Just head over to EmotionalReliefNow.com to learn more about how you can go from emotionally overwhelmed to grounded and calm in 90 seconds or less, and it can certainly help with the brain fog. Also, don't forget to click subscribe below. Let's walk together, and I'll see you in next week's video.